Good morning. Blade and Bright Rider, incident meteorologist, here with Jasmine, sign language interpreter, to give you a weather update for the Hermit's Peak and Calf Canyon fires for Sunday, May 22nd. So we had our back door front come on through last night. Um, before midnight, turned winds uh, a bit more to the east here. We were already kind of at that persuasion, right? So really, if we're getting technical, the back door front, in quotes, was actually not so much a front, but more of a reinforcement of that cooler air, that increase in relative humidity, and those easterly winds. So we had kind of a more of a southeasterly sort of persuasion as we went into the night last night. And then as the overnight hours came, it actually turned a little bit more due east across the fire past midnight. Um, these winds in particular, they were good to go for a while, um, especially across the south zone here, and then they eventually tapered out. Didn't see nearly as much of an impact from them up and across the west and east zone, um, specifically across the Mora River Valley. Uh, those areas tend to be a lot more sheltered from some of these more nocturnal wind events, uh, so they were more in that downslope down canyon persuasion pretty early on. But down here across the uh, southern portion of the fire, they went due east, um, not so much scooting across um, and curving like they did the night before, kind of more of a direct route. As you guys know, if you live in this area, as we get to the tip down here of the southern Sangre de Cristo Mountains, we actually have uh, quite a gap that kind of follows uh, in and around I-25. And so it's patterns like these that we often see those really intense gap winds uh, down over in Santa Fe and a little bit further south down at Albuquerque. And I know down a little bit further there at the Albuquerque Sunport Airport, they actually saw, I'm trying to think it was either the upper 50s, even the lower 60s uh, for wind gusts down there due to this activity and the continued surge of that backdoor cold front south. So for us, we got yet another invigoration of moisture that brought our overnight recoveries, which are our moisture replenishment up to the good and actually more excellent category. We saw things in the 80 percentile and we also saw things get up into the 90 percent range uh, as we got into the very early morning hours this morning. Temperatures, ooh, they were cold, you guys. So across the board, looking at below freezing temperatures, uh, getting up into the, uh, or down, excuse me, into the mid 20s as you get a little bit closer into the Black Lake, Chacon area, um, and into the Mortar River Valley. Uh, got really, really chilly up in there. As we get a little bit further south into uh, the western perimeter here of the south zone, even there we saw things getting into the upper 20s, but mostly places like Pecos, Willow Creek, and even out here at Las Vegas uh, generally stayed within a few degrees of freezing. But with that, winds that were coming across here definitely created a nice uh, environment to have some really nasty wind chills. So the crews out there were definitely party to wind chills getting into the 20s uh, as we got into the overnight hours. So what does this mean for today? So right now it's pretty cloudy out there, got a nice good stratus deck, an indicator that it's a pretty stable atmosphere out there as well. So we're expecting things to be moderated quite a bit as we go into the day today, uh, sticking around with uh, that influx of relative humidity, actually getting more likely into the 20% range as opposed to getting into these double digits. Um, and then as we go for temperatures, very similar to yesterday. Now, if these clouds don't erode like they're expected to, might see things a little bit lower than what you see forecast. As far as winds are concerned, winds love to be moderated by cloud cover. So they will continue to be pretty light and variable as we go through the remainder of the morning and probably into the early afternoon hours. As soon as that cloud deck starts to erode away, we'll see them start to pick up. But even with that, they're not going to be anything like some of the more intense events or related to frontal events that we've seen. More likely, they're going to be uh, in that 15 to 20 mile an hour range uh, and gusting to 25 really at best. Orientation today, we're going to have more of a due south sort of persuasion here. 
Uh, so you can expect that some of these aligned canyons, uh, looking at kind of the Pecos River Valley, um, Chacon up there, uh, they might get a good bit of channeling with some of the south winds. They might see some of the more breezy conditions as we go into the afternoon. So just kind of a look at what is happening and what we can expect as we go in a little bit further. So our upper level pattern right now, you'll remember we had that trough that was kind of digging, digging into the state of New Mexico here. That has since flattened up a bit. Um, so we're looking at what would be called a zonal flow. So that's going from west to east. Um, it's still pretty brisk up there. Um, so this would be at 500 millibars. Um, remember your atmospheric nacho theory, that's your bean layer, the, the layer that can shift things up and cause things to be a little bit disturbed and unsettled as we get a little bit lower to the surface. Winds up there, not looking too particularly bad, but we do have kind of a speed max here right in around uh, Las Vegas that's going at about 50 knots uh, as we get into what looks to be the uh, early morning hours here from this imagery. So this imagery is the air mass RGB, and what it's going to do is show us kind of what different pockets of cooler temperatures or warmer temperatures or perhaps some moisture. Um, it's going to display that in colors here. So with this, in and around the, uh, the Northeast Highlands and the Eastern Plains, we have a little bit more of a green and then also uh, kind of a tan color. The green in particular is showing us that the air mass is a little bit warmer uh, and therefore actually has a little bit more moisture, whereas we get a little bit further into the Great Plains territory, we see kind of more of a tan situation, which would suggest that there's a little bit of a dry out. And that's kind of verified by the fact that we do have, you know, clouds here, clouds here, and really not so much right there. So what is going to happen as we go into Monday is you see here a little bit of a short wave disturbance. Uh, so it's not a very pronounced feature, but it's going to turn into a, a decent trough that's going to dig on down back into the desert southwest as we go into Tuesday. And if you remember, troughs bring a little bit of invigoration to winds. They also, on this side of them, the east side of them, can add to instability. So as we go into Monday night, we're going to see yet another cold front passage, which is going to give us a little bit of added lift. That sets the stage for Tuesday to have the chance for thunderstorms. So you get three ingredients, right? You get lift, got that from the cold front. Moisture, we got that. We can even see a little bit of return flow coming in from the Gulf of Texas on that imagery we just looked at. And then instability. We're going to get a little bit more instability from that upper level system moving on through. So that sets the stage for Tuesday to be a particularly active day in and around the Northeast Highlands, but especially across the Eastern Plains. And that's something that we'll get into in more in depth tomorrow. Looking just ahead a little bit at the rest of the week here, we're going to see a warming and drying trend, kind of getting back into the status quo of what we've seen really since the beginning of April here. We're going to see things go from being in the 60s to quickly jumping into the lower 80s as we get into Friday. Stuff dries out pretty quick, so you can imagine a chapstick advisory getting put into effect there on Wednesday and definitely into a chapstick warning as we get back into those single digits on Friday. Things get a little bit more destabilized, and then you'll see winds are going to go from a, a totally reasonable and almost uncharacteristic to this area this time of year of 12 gust 22. That's going to increase steadily until Friday when we get into that critical fire weather wind category, 20 gusts 30. So 20 gusts 30 combined with those single digit relative humidities signify to me that on Friday and potentially into the weekend, we're going to see critical fire weather conditions return. So that's all I have for you guys today. Stay safe out there, rock and roll, and I'll see you tomorrow.